You are a chosen person from a chosen nation created to reflect God's image. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. See, a chosen person formed for a chosen goal. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Told you, you're from a chosen nation, a holy nation. So, God created man in his own image. See? Created to reflect God's image. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at the lesson of mercy and judgment in the book of Esther. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around, because here it is. In the book of Esther, Esther was trying to save her people. And she invited Haman and the king to two banquets of wine with the purpose of saving her people. Some people might say that Esther's intention was to destroy Haman. I'm going to say that that was not on her agenda unless it had to be. Her agenda was to save her people. And in order to do that, she invited the king and Haman to two banquets of wine. Let's dive into the lesson of mercy and judgment that we can see in these banquets of wine. Why is it that the banquet of wine is so important? It's because wine represents Yeshua's blood. And blood represents his mercy. It's what's applied to us when we stand before the Father so that we can pass through the judgment. The stuff that he can't see without judging, that blood covers us and he sees his son. The stuff that he can see that he does like, that stuff doesn't have to be covered. Here in the Exodus story, we see the death angel passing over Egypt and killing all the firstborn. And the only houses who don't have that firstborn killed are the houses with the blood on the doorposts. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. See, it says, the blood shall be a sign for you. What shall it be a sign of? This is the very beginning of their journey from Egypt to the promised land from being not in relationship to, with God to just kind of knowing that he exists to actually being in relationship with him. And it's vitally important to understand that Yeshua is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth. That's what this blood is a sign of. It's a sign of the covenant with Abraham. And here in this story, we see a whisper of that sign through this banquet of wine. Esther's having this banquet of wine and in the first banquet, Haman is spared. He's shown mercy, which is exactly the characteristic of the blood. His intention is to kill the Jews and he walks away scotch-free with a joyful heart. Esther says, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king and Haman come to the banquet which I have prepared for them. And tomorrow I will do as the king has said. This banquet of wine, this first banquet of wine, wine representing Yeshua's blood, and Yeshua's blood being what brings us mercy before our king, this banquet of wine should have been the death of Haman, but it wasn't. He was given one more day to live. Haman, he should have sensed that death was at his door, but he didn't. And instead, he walked in pride. And what he did with his extra 24 hours sealed his fate. 
Haman went out joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai not standing or trembling before him, he was filled with indignation against him. Haman went home telling his family and his friends all about his great power, his great wealth, favor that he had before the king and then he went on to tell them what was really on his mind yet all this avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate at this Zeresh says hey husband he's really pissing you off isn't he well why don't you build a gallows let's get let's get rid of him and that's exactly what they did Look at what he did with his 24 hours. He was given mercy, and instead of doing good with it, he did wickedly. And here comes the second banquet of wine. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And the king said, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Up to half my kingdom it shall be done. Then Queen Esther answered, and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. Then King Ahasuerus answered and said to Esther, Who is this person? Where is he who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing as to kill the queen and her people? Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, Will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now Harbana, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was subsided. Here, we see that Haman's wickedness, not even mercy, could quell. Haman had so much goodness going for him, but he let one little thing that he viewed as negative completely consume him and take over his mind, his body, his actions. In actuality, what was really consuming him was a need to destroy God's people. And we know who put that desire inside of him. That's right. Satan was completely in control of Haman unto his own destruction. And to look at this at a more zoomed in angle, Haman's desires led him to need to destroy the man who raised up the queen, his king's wife, whom the king had chosen, handpicked from thousands. This second banquet of wine it represents a characteristic of Yeshua's blood a new characteristic that I'm going to reveal to you here judgment in order for our Savior's blood to be applied to us he had to die when he died he died in judgment being judged for our sins some of us we die on that cross with him in judgment of our sins to be raised to newness of life. While others die in judgment of our sins to be raised to condemnation eternally. We see in this story that in Haman's case, he was shown mercy. And then when judgment came, what he did with that 24 hours sealed his eternal condemnation. He walked in pride. God is able to humble those
who walk in pride. And there you have it, the picture of mercy and judgment from the book of Esther. If you enjoyed this video, man, I sure would appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. My analytics are telling me that about half of you are not subscribed to this channel. If you're new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button and come back again. These short videos are chock full of little known information that are meant to help anchor you to meditation on scripture through whatever life has to throw at you. I'm here to help you, but more importantly, I'm here to point to you, point to you. <laughs> I'm here to point to the one who has the strength to help you. For him, helping you is no problem at all. In fact, it's his joy to help you. Snuggle up real close to him. Be under his wing and between his shoulder blades and let him protect you from above, below, and side to side. His goodness is never ending.